Yeah, so we are here at um, Oral Farm, visit our second visit. And I had some things to, to, some questions to ask him. And we wanted to have a look. We wanted to look today at slatted floors and what you should do and how you should build your pen with the slatted floors. We're also going to look at uh, how you should give them the minerals, like the mineral mix and so forth that we buy from the, the feed mills. And we also wanted to look at um, age, how you know the age of a goat. So we have three interesting things. A veteran oral will teach us today. <laughs> so now we are in the, um, we are now in the FAO um, facility that um, was donated to Jamaica. A few farmers all over Jamaica got these facilities. Oral was one of the recipients of this. And what we are concentrating on today is to have a look at the slotted floor. Oral, this slotted floor here, this what size board is this? This is this is two by four. Okay, they use the two by four. You can also use the one by three to build the slotted floor. And what they did is to put the boards down. You have some beam across. And one of the most important things is to have the spacing. If you look at the spacing of the slotted floor, Oral, this look a little too wide for yes, kids. This is too wide for kids. This pen is not ideal for kidding. This is good enough for winners, but not ideal for kidding. What happens if you put if your kid on this on the floor with this this type of slot? With this type of slot, um, the kid foot, you know, when a kid just born, is he or she is wet. So the foot going to slide in between the space and you know he's going to get stuck. So this is not the ideal pen for breeding females. You need this, the flooring to be a little bit closer. I, I recommend a half inch. Right now this flooring seems to be about three quarter inch. So three quarter inch is too much. Half inch is about a good. Yes. And, and another thing that you have to bear in mind is that the floor, the, the wood shrink right and another thing you have to look into is when kidding sees you have to make bedding because board when it's wet it's very slippery and especially the two by four that is also a, which is already a dress lumber the one by three is more of a rougher lumber so the kid will have a better balance than the one by three but with a floor like this is the kids you're going to have problem with kidding with a floor like this so you would have to make bedding but half in space, what do you use as bedding grass so you just use some of the hay and you put and you put an area where you can have the kiddies. Are you what you do? You grass the entire floor almost. It all depends. Um normally when we have boards having kids, we have a special area that we put them. Right. A, a closer board floor is all we tend to make them have kids on the ground and then we transfer them a day after on the board floor. But for safety, it is very safe to have them with the proper spacing right. on the floor because of that situation. Um also, the, 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 the manure will naturally go through the floor even with that half inch space. It has to be of size that the kids' feet, when they're just born, they are wet and slippery and the, 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 the manure and, and the feet will not push through the space. And that is what is important. So people, you can use two before. You can use, I prefer to use um, rough lumber. It's better to use rough treated lumber yeah. and it's also better either the two the one by three rough or the two by four is okay and um when i'm doing it one of the things that i do because this stick is about three quarter inch and, and you can see look at what happens with the three quarter it's going through this this is about the size of a kid's feet when they are just born so what I usually do, I get a half inch piece of bolt or a half inch piece of steel and I just push it inside here and push the board against it and then I nail each one of these lots as I install them to make sure I have a consistent half inch space between the entire floor. And that is what is very important in your pen. And please remember, these boards shrink. So sometimes, maybe a year after oral, yes, they're going to they're going to shrink, shrink. and that space will end up being what, like, but like three quarter inch, maybe even an inch. inch. Yes, we have seen situation that after a long period of time, that space becomes one inch, and you have to lift up these board and reinstall them. So bear that in mind that when you're building the pen, you must do it in a way, put down the board on the floor 
in a way that you can lift these boards back again and shift them if necessary. So, Horat, what about your mineral, um, mineral, um, how, how do you give the ah, boats mineral? If you notice, my mineral is a little different from everybody else's own. I add molasses to my minerals. Okay. So this is a Nutramix from Nutramix. Right. And I add molasses to it. So what it does, it, it's a, a what I, well, why I add molasses to it is because I want it to be a combined jelly stuff. When I put, um, it, when it's too dusty, when the breeze blow, it tend to um, blow out a little. So this is what it looks like. So I add it's like mud. He mixes it. molasses into the mineral mix and it becomes like a mud. That is how it looks. And this is how my girls love it. The molasses also encourage them to eat the mineral. If I should follow these goats, they will eat up five of this for the day. Right, just because of the molasses. the molasses. Because they love the molasses so much. So you just need a small container right. and you give the goats the free choice. You give them their minerals by free choice. Free choice. And you just put it in the um, in the pen and they'll eat it. And they should have minerals all the time, at least once a day. They should have the mineral at least once a day by free choice. Um, it is very important to give them the mineral by free choice. <laughs> Especially when the baby mothers are, are milking and they're producing the milk. The free choice mineral actually actually makes the milk come down much much more they produce the mothers will produce a whole lot more milk i was just talking to a farmer a while ago as i was saying and his goats are eating the dirt this is usually a sign that they are lacking in in, in minerals and nutrition here we have a young buck, buck a boar so one of the things is significant to note oral you can you explain to them how do you know a boar Wait. Ah, 90% of the time, you don't have to trust the breeder. Yes. The breeder is the key. Because uh, you, you cannot say a poor goat is going to have red head and white body. A lot of goats going to come. Even with the native goats, they're still going to come with red head and white body. So you have to trust the breeder. This book is a book from Dr. Patrick Graham. Um, he's about seven months old now. He, he has adapted to my program properly as yet, so he's a little bit off, but he'll get there in time. Now, when you're looking for a ram, you will check the teeth. In the mouth, there is eight baby teeth. Whenever he's... So, in other words, oral, in the beginning, they have eight baby teeth. Eight baby teeth. And at what point do they, these teeth drop out? They'll, it tends to happen, sometimes you'll find animals change seed from 9 to 15 months. So between 9 to 15 months, the teeth start to drop out and then they get the maturity. Right. With the, between 9 to 15 months, um, you'll find that two of these baby teeth will, will eventually drop out and two mature teeth will come in into play. And that signifies that the goat is? One year old. One year old. So two of the baby teeth drop out and two mature teeth grow and those teeth get bigger. Could we see, see again? All, so this ram has what? All eight teeth. All eight teeth. You can count them. See them there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All eight teeth. And these are the baby teeth now in this in this animal. So these two front ones right. will drop out. And then the teeth will get longer. And you will see it. You will see that the teeth is a bigger teeth. Right. So that ram is now one, one year, year old. old. And it goes for both the male and the and female. The female. When the goat gets a little more mature, going on to two years old. That's correct? Right. Go, go, go. Then when, when it, it, it that ram um, approaches two year old, two more teeth will drop out, and two more will come in. But occasionally, I find I've seen it more than once where I go change three set of teeth at two years old. At, at two years old. Right. So we're telling you what the norm is. The norm is at two years old, you will see four mature teeth, and then at three years old. You see an additional an additional two more mature teeth growing. And at four years old, all the teeth hey. will be exposed. We are now going to show you another young goat. Another goat that is here. What age do you think this goat is um, oral? This is the mature teeth now. He's Alright, if you notice this goat here, 
you can see the two she is now approaching a hair hole you can see that these two teeth are bigger teeth coming into play so now this animal is approaching a hair she is not just she's not a hair yet but as i said they change between 9 to 15 months and you can see the signs of the baby, baby teeth. teeth if you look behind here you see the baby teeth and you see these two very big mature teeth coming up so she is approaching one year one, old. No, one year old so now. in the show ring generally speaking they would say this is a one year old right in, in a show ring you're going to show ring now we'll put that animal in a hair hole category uh, or uh, over here right but, but the judge can look at the teeth and tell how far how far up it come so then now they'll use their discretion and remain our you, you mean the height how, how tall how that tall is the teeth that permanent teeth because is because that teeth is not yet fully grown out right so that goat you see a while ago the teeth is not fully grown out that yet but usually by one year old the teeth will become fully grown right usually because i've had goat that approach almost two year old and they never change their teeth Right. All right. If you're going, yes. Okay. No man, look here at this yes, Sophia. Baby teeth. Look yeah. at this female. This is a mature goat. This animal is a mature animal. And if you should look in this animal's mouth. You are going to see baby teeth. I have never seen this before. So this is a mature goat? This is a mature goat. How old do you say this animal is? This animal is of about maybe going two plus three. Right. And but still I, showing baby teeth. And she's still showing baby teeth. So I have never seen this before. So you see, farmers, you can still get trick. So but these are all small rat teeth. <laughs> <laughs> so and this is a native? This is a native animal that I purchased um, about six months ago from someone. I know this animal is a mature animal. You can come around here and look, have a look at her from sideways. You'll see that this is a mature native goat. She has... Look at her other. We need to look at these others. She's pregnant now, right? She has babies. Oh, she have, she's now has kids on her. She have, and look at her other. She's now feeding young ones. So I've never seen that before. You know? I've never seen that before. So you know, Oral has just pointed out something to you. The teeth can be misleading. This is very important. The teeth can be misleading, but the teeth is a guide to the age of the animal. So farmers, sometimes you'll go and buy an animal, and the farmer might tell you that the animal is just six months old. Maybe it's a year old. Maybe it's two. Anything is possible. So it is very important to have trust in the farm that you're going to buy the animals from very important um, and also another thing that is very important to when you're buying animals is you know the, the general clear general care of the animal sanitation a lot of farmers now are just talking about drugs 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 drugs, drugs. drugs. any farm that you go on to buy animals and that farmer uses a lot of drugs are worming the animals very often and and you know just on a lot of different drugs and speaks about a lot of different drugs those farms you should stay away from because the animals will become you know drug what was the word immune. again immune to the drugs for example even the, the the wormer there's a point where the wormers won't help exactly right they build up the, the worm build up immunity to the wormer and and it don't work anymore so our aim in goat farming is to try our best to rear animals without using drugs. You must try and use very little drugs. And the key to that, the key to not using a lot of drugs and to get involved in that is to have a clean environment and make sure your nutrition is up. Right. Any comment oral? Well, you have basically summed it up nutrition proper, proper nutrition is the key in, in, in as they say breed come with feed yes breed comes with feed and nutrition is a key just too much just once you give the animal enough feed they will develop into great animals yes and you won't even need the, the, the aim also as we have seen in our video before that we should be aiming not even to be worming the animals 
you know we should be aiming for that and what happens is that the animals will bring up will, will, will build up immunity to 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 to, to, to parasites my and so program forth. i i do mostly zero grazing and most of the time i only worm like once a year yes so we want to try and avoid worming as much as possible because the drugs not a good thing to use not good not good at all all right so thank you all a lot and um for viewing this farm hey. One of the very important things in goat farm is, is to make sure that you have some dogs to protect your animals. And you know this predator lasso thing is a very important thing. So Oral, what is your program with your dogs? I mean how how Well I do dog I use I've been using dogs from, from started out. First I was breeding dogs before I started breeding dogs. Oh, Okay, so you're a dog breeder yes. and trainer? Yes, I used to do Rottweiler. Rottweiler is my favorite dog. Um, so I use the dogs, them, but I grow them from their puppies right. with, um, with the animals. So they, they work good for me. Because for two years, those dogs alone here, no one else but dogs. And right. they're the one watching the farm. Right. Because one of the things with these dogs, which is very important, you have to grow from a puppy. You grow the dog with the goats. You can't bring a mature dog with the goats. You grow them from puppy Puppies. with, the, with animals, the animals and you have to train them. Exactly. Because they will still bite the goat when they are growing. When they are growing. So you have to watch them and you have to train them and make them understand that the goats are part of their family and they must protect them and take care of them. So what kind of training you know you usually do with them? Well what I do you know from I put my dogs in the pen and I and I talk with them, they listen. But you see, when they don't listen, when I lick them, they remember that lick. <laughs> they, they never they never try anything. I have had dogs where goat having kids and they just run, keep on coming to you and barking and running back and coming until you follow them, you know that there's something. Most time when you find kids, even at night if the kids come out, sometimes we find the dog hug up the kid. I have dog here that breastfeed the, the good kids also. Right, very important. So in other words, when a mother is kidding, that, that dog, if properly trained, will tell the master, come and call him at his house, at his bedroom, and let him know that the mothers are kidding and they need help. I have also oral. My dog, I had a Rottweiler also. And that Rottweiler used to lick the goat off and clean the kids. Yes, I've had that many times. Many times. They will actually clean the kid and clean the mother from flies and all of that. As a matter of fact, I have about three mongrel puppies here. Mm -hmm. And is the pig, the mother pig that grew them. Right. And whenever, the, most of you can't find them, you're going to find them in the pig pen. Lane, the last time that hug, that hug of pigs, they were in the peg even with the baby pigs right through. It's like you can't separate them from the pigs. And they learn with that. Even if the baby chickens, the boiler chickens come out at baby stage, they won't trouble them. Right. So it's all so, about so training. It's how you train them. But remember, one bad apple will spoil everything. That's true. One bad dog do something wrong and the others will follow. So, so don't you, bring no bad egg into your operation. Grow them from there. Small. small. Don't take a mature dog and put in your pen. Never. Never ever do that. Do that. Alright. And another thing too, even a dog that is grown big and is used to goat farm at another location. Right. When you carry them to this new location. Yes, because there's another thing. No matter how these dogs know goat, if I should bring a new goat here, it's problem. Yes. It is problem until they realize that, that goat is a part of the family. Yes. They will bite up that new goat and kill them. They'll, 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 they'll do it because they look at the original herd that they have grown with as their family. No outside goat can come there. And once you bring an outside goat into the picture, they will damage him. So you have to be careful. All right, so thank Oral for being here. And um, we are going to on our next visit.